Hello, Algebra 1 students. We're going to take a look at three functions. We're going to name them, strangely enough, f, g, and h. Mathematicians like to do those things, you know, alphabetical order. Um, we call functions f of x because of f being the first letter in the word function, and then it seems logical if we're going to consider another function along with it to call it g and then h. If we get to a fourth function, it's i. Well, i means something else in math. The square root of negative 1, i, imaginary, part of the complex numbers. So we might be hesitant to, uh, to call a function i because of possible confusion, but certainly f, g, and h are common. And when we write, of course, f of x, equals something. This f of x is the same as y. Um, I believe in Desmos you can type in either f of x or y and then the function. I think if you type both it won't take it, but yeah. Functions, they're awesome. Quadratic functions, beautiful. So here's one, very simple. This is the, we can uh, find where the graph of this quadratic function crosses the x-axis by factoring, the first method we learn. We learn in a previous chapter how to factor trinomials, and then we put it to use in this chapter in finding where the graph of the function crosses the x-axis. We set the function equal to zero. We can solve, uh, I'm sorry, we can factor this as x minus four times x plus three. Remember this b here is negative one, the negative four x plus 3x give us the negative 1x for the middle term. We set each factor equal to 0, and of course, uh, 4 will solve this equation, as will negative 3. So when x is 4, the function is 0. When x is negative 3, the function is 0. These are the two x-intercepts. Please, if you haven't done so already, pause the video, type in x squared minus x minus 12 as a function, and confirm that it crosses the x-axis at those two points. Now, we've spent some time looking at completing the square. In this case, let's um, use the quadratic formula to get to the same two results. Uh, you should know how to proceed here by completing the square as well, but we're not going to necessarily do everything every time. So let's just remember the quadratic formula. For this particular function, a is 1, b is negative 1, and c is negative 12. So x equals the opposite of b, which is positive 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared. Negative 1 squared is positive 1, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2a. a is 1, so all over 2. And in the um, square root sign, we have 1 plus 48. We have to see this as negative 4 times 1 times negative 12, that's positive 48. So we have 1 plus 48, 49, which is a perfect square, and that goes along with the fact, the fact that we got a 49 for the discriminant, goes along with the fact that this um, quadratic equation could be solved by factoring, because the square root of 49, of course, is 7. So we follow each of these paths here, 1 plus 7 over 2, 8 over 2, there's the 4, the same 4. And we follow the minus path, 1 minus 7, negative 6, over 2, negative 3, the other 0. So this is the first function. I'm going to pause now. And in considering the other uh, two functions, we're going to uh, consider to some degree this concept of transforming a quadratic function, transforming the graph of the quadratic function. This is a, a very important concept. To fully understand quadratic uh, functions, you have to come to terms with this, and I'm going to try to get to this as we proceed. But for now, let's do this. You already have the function f of x equals x squared minus x minus 12. That's your f. Now, I've, I've chosen g strategically. The g of x is negative 2 times the f. Just take each term of f and multiply it by negative 2. And, and when, if we do that, we can say that g is negative 2 times f. Just go back to f for a second and imagine multiplying each of these terms by negative 2. You would get negative 2x squared 
plus 2x plus 24. And that's what g is. Negative 2x squared plus 2x plus 24. Please graph g. Type this in in Desmos for g. Okay? Now let's define h. Before we do anything with g, uh, let's define h. h is going to be 2 times f, positive 2 times f. And if you think about that, that's, that means that h is going to be the opposite of g. Right? So go back to f and multiply each term by positive 2. You'd have 2x squared minus 2x minus 24. And that's what I'm calling h. And of course, h is the opposite of g. It's negative 1 times g. Get the three functions typed in. I'm going to do that myself. And we can look at the three graphs. Type in f and, and g and h. You can call them all y equals if you'd like. I'm looking now at the three graphs on Desmos. And probably the first thing that's going to jump out at you is what? They all, they all cross the x-axis at the same two points. The x-intercepts of all three graphs is positive 4 and negative 3. That's on purpose. As we'll see, because the three quadratic equations, when we set each function equal to 0, all three of the equations are equivalent, so they have the same solutions. Now, these graphs are clearly not the same. The functions are not the same, but their x-intercepts are the same. Um, let's say something about g and h. If you take a look at the vertices of each of these, the vertex of g, and by the way, g opens down because the a is negative 2. Neg the a is negative, so it opens down. And the vertex is at 0 0.5, 24 0.5. We're not going to talk about how to get to the vertex in this video, but we know how to. All right. The vertex of h which opens up. H has an A of 2, so it opens up. Its vertex is at 0.5, negative 24.5. And for the parabola that opens down, that vertex is a maximum point. For the one that opens up, the vertex is a minimum point. We've seen that. But what I want you to see now is if you take either G or H and flip it over the x-axis, it's going to fall point for point on the other graph. The vertex from the one that's up there at 0 0.5, 24, 0 0.5 will flip down and fall on the other vertex and vice versa. Um, one function is the opposite of the other, meaning that reflection across the x-axis. That's one of the transformations that's covered in some of the things I've asked you to look at. Okay, let's, let's now take a look at the algebra of g and h. Well, when you take g and set it equal to 0 and try to solve for x, you have a situation that I don't like. You know, I'm not any different than you in terms of algebra. Uh, things that are hard for you are hard for me as well. I don't like to try to factor a trinomial where uh, the a is negative. I can do it, but I don't like it. So mathematicians very frequently will try to make a simpler problem out of a more difficult one. And so what we can do is, what if we multiplied uh, on both sides here by negative 1? Right? Multiply each term here by negative 1, and what are you going to get? You're going to get h, right? Because that's how I set up h. The uh, negative 2x squared times negative 1 is 2x squared. 2x times negative 1, negative 2x. 24 times negative 1, negative 24. Now, when you multiply the right here, side here by negative 1, of course, it's still 0. So the quadratic equation for g is equivalent to the quadratic equation for h. The graphs are not the same. The functions are not the same. But they have the same x-intercepts because their quadratic equations are equivalent. So now, I'm going, I'm going to factor this one. And the two, because it's easier, because A is positive. 
the, the solutions that I get here are going to be the same as the two solutions I would have gotten here if I had factored uh, G. All right. Well, I've already set up the factorization of 2x squared minus 2x minus 24, of course. And I put a 2x here and an x here. Now I've got to play that little game. Whatever I put here is going to be multiplied by 2x. Um, I've got, you know, I have to consider factors of 24 and try to get it to all work out correctly. And I didn't do that in advance, so I'm kind of where you are at this point. Uh, how do we do this? Well, um, let's see. How about if we put a negative, I think this is going to be a negative 4 and plus 6. Does that work? I think it does. Now, if, you, if you're clever, you could have used the results from f, right? As we know, all three of these functions have the same x-intercepts, that all three of the equations are equivalent. Right? Remember now, this g, g was equivalent to f. So that's on the other board, but all three of these equations are equivalent. And this is the correct factorization, right? 6 times negative 4 is negative 24. And the two middle terms are 6x minus 8x, which is the negative 2x. Now, setting each of these factors equal to uh, 0 and solving, we get x equals uh, negative 3 and x equals 4, right? If 2x plus 6 is equal to 0, Subtract 6 from each side, divide by 2, get negative 3. If x minus 4 is 0, of course, x is 4. I'm trying to think now if there's anything else I want to say about these three functions. Um, well, we only solved these two equations here by factoring. I actually did solve this equation by solving this one because they're equivalent. We only use factoring here. Of course, we could have used completing the square or the quadratic formula. But um, I, I think that's it. But this is a little, a little heavy. I understand that. It's a little bit heavy. But if you are looking at the graphs, uh, it, it's a wonderful result. Wonderful result here with these three functions that are all different, but all have the same x-intercepts. Watch the video again if you need to. That's the beauty of it. So long for now.